Hello and welcome. Today's video is what is JIRA? The objectives of this video are to find out what is JIRA, to define JIRA's concepts, describe JIRA's features, why use JIRA, JIRA alternatives, JIRA costs, and preparation. So let's begin. So let's begin with talking about what is JIRA. I have a picture of what it looks like the application on the screen here so you can see generically one of the screens. JIRA is an issue tracker and it was created by an Australian company called Atlassia. It was used by software development teams to follow up on their development projects in both the development and production. JIRA has become a great tool for planning and organizing projects among agile teams. In fact, it's probably the most popular tool used in Agile community. One of the major success factors of JIRA is that it allows for plugins and has an open architecture. This allows the flexibility with third-party software integrations, and this means there's a broad community support. Issues are the core of JIRA, but the word issue doesn't mean anything bad. In JIRA, an issue can be one of many things such as a new feature, a task, or an improvement. Each JIRA issue has several base information fields, such as keys, timestamps for creating and updating, and event information like who the issue is reported by and who it is assigned to. JIRA issues have fields to control the issue's state, also known as the status field. The status field lets the user know the current state of the issue, such as open or closed. When you move the issue from one state to another, it's called transition. And the resolution field provides information about the state of the issue and where it is such as fixed or non-fixed. JIRA in general is customizable and you can add fields of your own. So let's talk about JIRA's concepts. In JIRA, all issues must belong to a project and each project can have their own dashboards and configurations. The issue can belong to several components, a part of a project. All projects have their own way of working. Workflows allow you to figure out how to transition issues between the different statuses. For example, you can customize JIRA to assign issues to certain team members when it goes into a certain state, like assigning to a QA team when the issue is marked as fixed. JIRA has many features. First, you should know the query language of JIRA is its own language called jQuil. It's kind of similar to SQL. It has reporting features, and so the query language can be used to create filters that allows the project manager the ability to follow up and do analysis. JIRA also allows you to create advanced dashboards, which acts like an internal homepage for a development project. And JIRA has add-ons that allows customizable features so that you can get them or buy them from the Atlassian Marketplace. And it really is great because it integrates with a lot of other third-party software and there's a lot of uh, support in the community for the different products. So why use JIRA? Well, it is modern and Atlassian integrates each month. So there's a lot of updates that happen and they're pretty frequent. It's also very easy to scale. It is a mature tracking tool because it's been around for a while and it has an extensive database of tools. And is extensible through Atlassian's products and third party vendors. They're constantly updating it. And if you see any issues or you have suggestions, they take that into consideration and they add it to the tool, thus adding to the extensive database of tools that are available once you actually have JIRA. Now, just like all software, JIRA does have alternatives that you can use. There are alternatives just in case JIRA doesn't suit your purpose. There is TFS, which is Team Foundation Server. So if you are a Microsoft Office team, you may get more out of the box from TFS than you do with JIRA. It has mobile capabilities and the pricing schemes are not as flexible as JIRA, but it is an alternative. There is version one by CollabNet, that has a good enterprise integration. And there's also Pivotal Tracker, which is a software as a service or SaaS product tailored for agile project management and file sharing. 
Jira's costs. The server version costs have a cap. So for example, up to 10 users is a set price, regardless if you have four users or 10 users. However, costs go up after the 10th number limit. The data center costs have a max cap of users and there's no fee for under 500 users. And then the cloud costs are based on the level you are within the users. So you get a lower price per user the more users you have. Preparation. Like any software, you have to prepare to have JIRA installed and get it ready. So first, release notes. Before installing whatever version of JIRA that you choose, you need to make sure to read the release notes, as you should for any software installation. Why? Because it'll have helpful information about your setup. The release notes can be found on the Atlassian website. Database. You will also need to know the type of database you'll be running the solution with. JIRA supports a wide range of databases and versions, so make sure to check the website for your database type. Storage, backup, and disaster. You need to figure out how much storage you will need and a good strategy for backups. Be proactive for disaster scenarios as well. And authentication. You need to figure out how users will be authenticated to use JIRA, for example, through Active Directory or Google user accounts. So thanks for joining me today for this short video on what is JIRA. I hope you liked it. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button. If you'd like to see more information about project management videos and tools, go ahead and subscribe to my channel because I'm updating them and uploading them all the time. Thanks.